If you've been watching the channel since last year, you would know that I've already made a couple of videos on Parallels, and you would also know that I'm a pretty big fan of it, and I actually use it fairly frequently. Now, if you're not familiar with what Parallels is, it's essentially software that allows you to run Windows 10 inside a virtual machine on your Mac. And the cool thing about it is you can play games, you can use Microsoft Office apps, and anything else that you would prefer to use in a Windows operating system instead of Mac OS. Now, if you do want to install it, I actually have a how-to video I made a few months ago, so I'll link that down below. Definitely check that out if you want to install it and use it. But getting straight to the point, I got an email the other day that Parallels is actually updated to 16.5 so if you guys didn't already know version 16 was essentially a beta and it's been in beta up until a few days ago by the way if you're on version 16 and you want to go to version 16.5 open up parallels click the little button here and then go to check for updates and that will allow you to install 16.5 so what's actually new in 16.5? Well, to be honest, not a whole lot. You probably won't notice a huge difference, but I will talk about some differences that I think are gonna make a big difference to you. So first of all, 16.5 now features full native support for M1 Mac computers. So that means it's developed, it's optimized, it's entirely supported by Apple's ARM M1 chips, which is really good to see. And this is obviously going to allow applications to run faster and more efficiently. There are a couple of performance improvements that Parallels has quoted, such as less energy being used, a better Direct X11 performance, and just better overall virtual machine performance up to about 30%. And during my testing, I've actually been able to pretty much replicate that result. So before we actually get into Parallels, as you can see here, I've already got it loaded up. Let's come into the Parallels settings and let's come to Configure. And as you can see here, I'm only running four processors and four gigabytes of RAM. So this is generally what Parallels recommends using no more than about 50% of the system resources to run the Parallels VM or virtual machine. Now I have tested with six cores and six gigabytes and eight cores and six gigabytes, all different combinations, which you guys can see in the previous videos. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it at four processors and four gigabytes of memory. Now, touching on memory, I do recommend 16 gigabytes if you're going to be running VMs, as you can see in this video linked in the top right-hand corner. So let's move into Parallels now, and we're actually going to open up the browser here because I have some Geekbench scores. So if you guys remember in a previous video, I got 1518 for the single core score and 4988 for the multi-core score. So barely any difference to the single core score, which is to be expected, but we can see a somewhat noticeable increase for the multi-core score. But again, guys, we're only using four cores for the testing, so it's not gonna be anything crazy. Now, moving on to Cinebench, the results were somewhat similar. So in my previous videos on the beta version of Parallels, I was able to get 511 for the single core, and then for the multi-core score, 1833. So you can see, again, a somewhat significant increase there. Uh, but nothing too crazy. Now, the one thing I do want to mention and where I've seen the most improvement is actually the number of games you can play. So as you guys are probably already aware, this isn't the full version of Windows. This is actually another beta version. So this is the beta version of Windows ARM. So what this means is you can't actually natively run x64 apps. It has to be emulated within Windows. So that means some of these games you can't natively play, but some of them will work because Windows is actually able to emulate an x64 environment for them to actually load up and play so in a previous video you guys would have seen that i tried to launch a whole bunch of games most of them didn't work i am pleased to say now that some do work so some additional games do work most notably i've been able to play gta 5 and also hitman absolution among a couple of others now you're not going to be playing them at 60 fps full 1080p settings you know at the end of the day this is a mac but they still work fairly well what I'll do is I'll actually pop up some B-roll on the screen right now of me playing Hitman Absolution. So this game came out about 2015, and as you can see there, it definitely is playable. There are obviously quite a lot of dropped frames, and it's not super smooth. But what you guys have to understand is this is a fanless base model MacBook Air running an ARM version of Mac OS inside a virtual machine only using 50% of the CPU and the RAM. And on top of that, Windows 10 X64 is actually emulating this particular game to run in X64 mode. So that is very, very incredible, regardless of what kind of frame rates or performance you're gonna get on this game. The fact that it's running at all above like 10 FPS is pretty amazing. So that's probably one of the biggest differences here. And guys, that's not so much an issue with parallels. 
that's going to be from Microsoft because they don't necessarily seem to be rushing the development and updating of X64 emulation in their Windows 10 ARM um, Insider previews. Again, that's still very much a beta. And a couple of guys asked me if Valorant is working. Unfortunately, no, it's not. I was able to install it. I was able to install a launcher. But when I actually go to click play, it just constantly asks me to restart the Mac. And obviously that doesn't work at all. As you can see here, that's the error message. But like I said previously, guys, we're getting there very, very slowly. Over time, you'll slowly see more and more games come out. So I think in the next 12 months, it's going to be pretty exciting to see where Parallels and the ARM version of Windows 10 ends up. Anyway, that's it for me for this video. If you have any questions or things you want me to test in Parallels, let me know. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.